All right, let's see if you guys are ready. Class. Yes. Wow. Wait, what, that? what the hell? Can you believe that? It's you said you were ready. It's you Friday. said you were ready. It's Friday. It Maybe it's out. because you have your earbuds in still. Oh. Maybe that's what it is. Do it time. You're not ready. Do it time. You're not ready. You, you Do messed time. it up. You messed it up. No Christmas for you. That's it. Okay. You stupid. You stupid. You stupid. You stupid. Stupid. Oh. This is the reason why I cannot monetize this class anymore. <laughs> oh, you're recording. Determining what you can <laughs> afford. Go ahead. Determining what you can afford. Okay, spend no more than 20%, 28% of your gross monthly income on your mortgage payment. Now, what's the definition of gross? Disgusting. Oh, Disgusting. Not Brandon. On tax. Before tax, right? <laughs> Okay, so before tax, that's gross, right? So no more than 28% of your gross monthly income for your mortgage payment. Spend no more than 36% of your gross monthly income for your total monthly debt, including mortgage payments, car payments, credit card bills, student loans, medical debt. Those are like reoccurring debts. Well, okay, nice thing. Anyway, so given that information right there. All of those reoccurring debts, you can't because you have to live off of everything that's left over. That would be your food, okay? Your water bill, okay? You guys move out of your parents' house, guess what? You have to pay like electricity and water. Then you turn into your dad and start yelling and be like, who let the lights on? Okay, every single time. Because when you see that $450 APS bill? Not, not expensive? Yeah. Damn. Or more. Damn. Okay, back when I first moved to Phoenix, uh, that was 12 years ago. Yeah, 12 years ago, when I first moved to Phoenix, my first summer here, we had a $450 APS bill for the month of July? I think it was July. Did you guys, did you guys have, were you living in a house? Yeah, so I bought a house when I moved here. So yeah, we bought a house. You and own it, your house? Huh? You own your house? Are you still paying your house? Yeah, we're still paying, but still, we bought a house. Did you buy a house in the past? Did you buy a house? Uh, depends on which one you're referring to. Well, did you buy a house in the I bought a house after the crash. So, so it was it was it, it wasn't too bad. It wasn't too bad. So I, I was able to re turn around and sell it for more money though, How if that's what you're asking. Way. So with that, your APS bill, you also have to include that. And so if you're able to try and work that out to get this program, I know for like electricity, there's like a program where you could actually pay it every equal every month. So, cause you're not like in the month of January, you're not gonna turn on your AC, right? So you should have a lower APS bill than you would have in the middle of the summer. Yeah. So they do this thing where they equalize it. So they basically take all year, year of the year before, add them all up, divided by 12. That would be your monthly APS bill. For generally? No. Yeah, they would do that for each one. But it, you, have to, you have to have it for a whole year to be able to start that. How much did you save if you named your APS bill like the same thing? Because that's what you mean. I don't know what you save using OnlyFans. Not OnlyFans. Depends. Depends on your house. Depends on the year. Depends on the insulation. Depends on a lot. And so, Southern California, they don't require you, everyone to have AC units. Some places don't. They do? Yeah. Because guess what? If you don't have an AC unit here in Arizona, it's actually against the law if you work, if you are living in an apartment and the AC goes out, it's against the law for them to not fix it. So. Yeah, that's how hot it is. Wait, that's confused. That's a lot too. So when I saw that we're 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 paying a eleven dollars a day. Okay. We're in the house for AC or for lights. Yeah. What is that? Like two hundred bucks. Eleven times thirty. Yeah, like two hundred bucks. Three thirty, right? That's a lot. How'd you get four fifty then? Because that's what it was. 
So anyway, along with that, we have a table to go along with this. So you could actually try to understand how much money you need to make a year to figure out what the cost of summer school is going to be. Class. Anyway, so your gross annual income, so that's how much you make a year. What it comes out to be your 28%, which is about 700 there. And your total monthly obligation should not exceed $900. So out of everything in this lesson, this is actually going to be the one that people don't pay attention to because I'm trying to give you guys facts about being an adult. But instead, they're on their phones. They're... Edgar, come on, man. <coughs> So right here, your monthly payment. So if you try to find a place locally for less than $700, that's a lot, okay? You need to make over $30,000 a year. Now, for this one right here, it might make a little bit more sense as we go through this. Suppose your gross annual income is 45,000. So that means that's for the whole year, right? The gross annual means how much you make for the entire year What's the max amount you should spend each month on a mortgage? Okay, I got a conflict right here. This is an annual, so it's a whole year, but I only want to figure out per month. What do you think I should do with that? Divide by 12, yep, yeah, let's do that. So 45,000 divided by 12. Very good. Now I'm going to take that one right there. I'm trying to get to my num works. And what percent? What percent am I going to use? 28%, right? So it was my 45,000 divided by 12 is my monthly. And then I'm going to take that and I'm going to multiply times my 0.28. There's my 28%. It's almost like I'm giving you the stuff in the notes that you might want to. Yes? Um, 28%. Remember, if you turn the 28% into a decimal, you move it over twice, right? So it's going to give you your 0.28. So I have, was it 1050? Okay, did you watch me do this on the calculator? Or did you zone out again? No, but where does the zero, where does the 28% come from? Okay, and guess what the next percentage I'm going to use is going to be? <coughs> yeah, I'm going to use 36 for the next one, right? So that's where these percentages are coming from. And let me go back. There you go. Okay, so that's where I get my 1050. What's the max amount you should spend each month on total credit obligations? So that's going to be my 36%, right? So I'm going to take my number. <laughs> and times 36, or 0.36. So my total obligation, so your total everything reoccurring debt that you have each month should not exceed 13, four, thir bleh, 1350. That's all your obligations. That's your car payment and everything. Monthly? Every month. Okay. So it says right here, spend no more than 30% of your gross monthly income on your for your total monthly debt, including mortgage, car payments, credit card bills, student loans, medical debt. 
So if you max out your mortgage, that doesn't leave very much left over to pay for credit card and all that other debt that you have. <laughs> what? Okay, so let's say for instance, uh, you think you're some type of soccer player. So you go out to the, you know, to park and you try to play soccer, then you end up like tripping over a sprinkler and like breaking your ankle. You don't have insurance. And so you still go to the doctor, they put your foot in a cast, and then you're gonna have to make monthly payments to pay back that doctor. So that's what that is. If your monthly mortgage is 80% of the maximum amount you could afford, what is the max amount you should spend each month for all other debt? Now, this one right here is gonna be important. So I'm gonna take this right here, my 1050. Nope. I have to find 80%. So instead of instead of maxing out how much I can spend on my mortgage, I'm going to use less. So I'm going to take my 1050 and I'm going to multiply by 80%, which is 0 0.80, right? Yes. So that means that my monthly mortgage is only 840. So my monthly mortgage is 840 now. And let's find the difference between my new monthly mortgage and what I'm allowed to spend on reoccurring debt. So if I have a lower house payment, that means I could have a larger car payment. So I could afford a better car payment. So I'm gonna take my 1350 minus my 840 and I get 510. So that means that including in my debt, I can now afford that. So I can afford 510 each month. And that would be my credit cards and all my other stuff to go along with it or car payment. Okay. Does that make sense? So right now here in America, I think average, the average adult carries about $30,000 of debt in some way, shape or form. Average? Average. Yeah, I have debt. So round out computation to the nearest dollar. And so towards the end, at the end of this, I will actually bring it up so you guys can see what the actual na national average is right now. What for? Okay. All right, make it quick because we got to do the rest. Because I'm assuming that debt is not from one. Multiple things, right? multiple things. Yeah, multiple things. So how would you like, how can you say like, I have this much of debt, like how do you know? Okay, so I currently have uh, at least $10,000 in debt because <laughs> I have a car payment. Oh, yeah. Okay, so reoccurring debt, that's one of them. And you just paid it monthly. Yes, because that is a debt. You are in debt to the loan company that you have to continuously pay to them. Yeah. Yeah. How much? Was the loan? Wow. Did you just say ten thousand dollars? That's how much I still owe. Uh, no. So you're late on car payments then? So if you No. No, if you're late on car payments, you that means you missed a car payment, right? And yes, and they take away your car. They will repo it. Yeah. Damn, and, and you lose your money, damn. Your parents yes. Don't they win. So how long does it take your parents to pay off your birth loan? It depends on if there is medical insurance or no medical insurance. So, uh, there was medical insurance. We didn't have to pay. So military took care of it. What? Yeah. So now that we're back to here, Mister has put four fifty credit score. Okay. Here we go. So now, like I said, I will bring up the national debt as soon as we're done with this. Uh, benefits of renting, no down payments, no points are required. You generally security deposit that is returned at the end of your lease. Very mobile, you can easily rotate, uh, relocate, moving as often as you'd like as your lease permits. Does not tie up hundreds of thousands of dollars that might be invested more safely and lucratively elsewhere. 
Most financial advisors agree that you should buy a home because you want to live in it, not because you want to fund your retirement. Now, for those people actually paying attention, over the course of history here in America, your home was your biggest investment. That's one of the things that always appreciated, went up in value. Okay, over the long haul, your property, your house should go up in, up in value, unless you live in the ghetto and then you have a crackhead neighborhood, okay? Does not clutter what you can afford for your total monthly debt with mortgage payments. I'll tell you right now, according to current, okay, your rent is gonna be more than the mortgage. Okay, you guys know Dr. Styles? Yeah, okay, so he is renting. His rent is more than my mortgage. He pays monthly more than what I pay, and I own my home. That's what I'm saying, okay? It depends on when you buy, because if I were to try and buy right now, that would be different. I would be at different market rates. But since I bought a while ago, I still make the same monthly payments. So I'm good to go. I have a fixed monthly payment. So even though that everyone's rents go way up, my mortgage stays the same the whole time. So the longer I keep it, the better it is, especially with the cost, the cost of inflation. So the people who bought houses during the, during, during the crash, the house market? After the crash. Their mortgages were super low? Yes, like after the crash. So people who have houses since then? Have since then, okay, they are better, better invested. So they could probably turn around and sell their house. So let's say, for instance, I bought mine, my house for 200,000 in 2020. Yeah. Okay. It is currently, I think my neighbor sold his house for 600,000. Damn. How much did you get back with I haven't sold mine yet. Are you gonna sell it? Would you sell it? But still, the point is, if you buy low in the market, then hold on to it, live in it, most property and land appreciate. That means goes up in value. Oh, so, things that are actually good, if you plan on living somewhere for a while, buy a house. Especially if you don't plan on moving. Okay, buy a house where you're at, invest in your house, make it nice, okay, and then turn around and sell it well, when it's time for you to go. Why do you say it's so easy when it's not easy like that? To buy a house, it's not cheap. So it's, about it's not cheap. It's okay, cheap. but I really want you to think about this. Okay, go back to the story about me and Dr. Stiles. He's paying more to rent than I pay a month for a mortgage. So who is it cheaper for? Why? If you're renting, you're paying someone else's mortgage. So can you really afford, if you were to own it yourself, and you might end up paying less money in the long run, but just, yeah, renting is more expensive right now versus owning a home. So why are so many people renting still? I'm so confused. Why? I don't know, Mike. Oh, okay, you're confused and- I'm not confused. Yeah, it is, it is what it is because people don't wanna buy a house. They, they don't realize that they're wasting their money. They're throwing away money, they're paying someone else, they're putting money in someone else's pocket. I used to own a rental property. I used to own a rental property. That was my property, someone else was living in it. So that means that person would pay rent and that rent was more than what I owed on the house every month. So I made a net profit of $200 every month because someone was renting the house, I paid my mortgage and then I put money aside to go along with that. It's the same house. I just owned it, someone else is paying my bills. That's what I'm saying. So if you're able to, you're, you're smart enough with your money and you are able to, it is possible. You just have to you know, be smart with money and pay attention. So does that make sense? A little bit better? Okay, Gabriel, did I answer your question? Where you at? you're gonna ask to go use the restroom? Oh, okay, go ahead, ask. Are you ever really going to have enough money? Let's say you're making like six figures at one point, you're 
are you ever going to have enough money? The answer is no. The answer is no. Like, in all actuality, I, okay, to be honest, okay, I think this might be the first year since I have two extra jobs that I might make six figures. I might. That's unheard of for a teacher unless you're a principal. Okay, so I just have extra jobs that I do. Just because you, everyone's got to have a side hustle. Now, with that, I still don't make enough. It's not really enough. You know, you say six figures, and yes, I'm about ready to break that. But then, is that really enough? Not really. So, invest early. Try to get your money to make money for you. No, it's not. It's never too late. Do you know what you have right now? Do you have something that I don't have? Time. We're all going to die. What's the point? The point is live your best life. You're all going to die. This guy's going to die sooner. Okay, you're going to keep talking crap. Okay, now, so, listen, everyone's going to use your time wisely, okay? Act like, you know what? You you are preparing for tomorrow. Don't don't spend all your money. Don't be like, you know, in the club every weekend, you know, throwing your money at whoever you throw it at. Okay, so. Men. And, and, and invest. Okay, don't waste money. Okay, when you when you ask your mom, be like, hey, can we stop at McDonald's on the way home? And she said, we got food at home. Listen to That's going to be at you as an adult real quick here. I got it, dude. Yeah, you're like, hey, I ain't got that McDonald's money. Right? Nope. 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 You just have, like, by difficult, how, how dedicated are you going to be to do it? I, I have people, okay, I actually have a student, this was last year, they had thousands of dollars in stocks already. Damn. They set up an account and then, you know, they're just putting a little bit of money and that that's kind of what they were doing. They were investing already. And, they, and that was last year. Stock market was down last year. This person was still making money. Do you know why? The research on what actually made money. How much effort are you going to put into it? If you, you know, if you really want to just sit there and stare at your phone all the time, or like homie over there just playing a video game, is that going to affect him? Is that going to make him money? Everything you should do, or is that going to make you money? Is that just wasting time? Wasting time. When you invest in stocks, do you pull it out when it's high, or do the same stocks? Do you leave your investment in there? Okay, so now we're actually going to do stocks next unit. But I will tell you right now, okay, don't pull it out. Do you know how rich people stay rich? By looking for it. Don't pull it out. So there is two people. They actually have two people, two of actually one of the one of the, the most richest financial advisors here in America. Okay? Okay, no. No. Anyway, so what he does, he says he pays less taxes than his secretary. His secretary makes 80 grand a year. So the person that works for him makes 80 grand a year. He pays less taxes than she does. Because all 100% of his money goes towards investment. And so the only time you actually get charged taxes is when you pull out of your investment. Oh, so you keep it in there. Just keep it in there, right? And you only take out taxes when it benefits you so you you don't like waste all your money just leave it in there will let it, your let your money make money for you will it affect you if you put it in no like tax wise nope oh okay so only De depend depends on how you did it so remember when we talked about iras mm -hmm. okay and we actually had talk about pre-tax and post-tax so if you do it before taxes they take a big chunk out of it afterwards oh but if you put it in after taxes, they don't tax that afterwards. Whatever you pull out. So, making money. This person just keeps making money. So, he only owed zero dollars in taxes the previous year. Because he didn't make any money. All his money went into investment, 
He didn't pull it out. Yes, that guy. Yeah, we're we're gonna do that one. We're gonna do that one next week, and that that's gonna be our W four form. Okay. Okay. So we again we will talk about that next week. So continue with this right here. So did, did I answer everyone's question on that investment part? Because yeah. we're gonna do more of that when we actually do some of this stuff. And I'm gonna let you guys. I'm gonna give you guys the opportunity to show you a way to start doing some investment if you want to. So instead of actually going to the McDonald's and paying $25 or getting that Uber Eats, which costs $65 for that, you know, that six piece nugget, okay? Take your money, do something different with it. Anyway, benefits of renting. Okay, if you don't have to worry about it, there we go. They say it's gonna be more month, lower monthly payments. So according to this, this was actually written in 2021. As of right now, it does not it does not fit the same model. But we'll talk more of that when we talk about our financial project, which is all gonna be current models. Okay, uh, all this stuff, bam, good. Okay, benefits of home ownership. Peace of mind provides significant, significant tax advantage, including deduction from mortgage interest and property taxes. There's no change of rent increasing over time allows freedom to remodel, landscape, and redecorate. You can build up equity. The difference between a home's value and what you owe in the mortgage as the mortgage is paid off. Possibility of home appreciation is potential source of cash in the form of equity loans. Don't take out an equity loan because that's basically not good. Don't do that. Anyway. Now, I'm going to leave you guys here. I'm going to want you guys to have the rest of the time to actually work on your homework. Okay, if you have any questions, get to work. Anyway, yeah. No, I try not to listen to them. <laughs>